justice system to hear, consider all the submissions from the appellants to make a determination at the end of the day of what the interests of justice should look like. Did you go to work material you intended to go to for today? No, tomorrow we will be going specifically to most of the affidavit evidence that's already before the court, including the medical reports and the psychological reports that were done in relation to some of the appellants to make the point to the court that it has been an ordeal for these appellants to have to wait for so long, 13 years, and that we are worried that this case will be a precedent for other Jamaicans, poor Jamaicans, who may now have themselves subjected to a system where you can be in custody for 13 years and then subjected to the award of a new trial when your money is essentially done. And on that point, Mr. Clark, you urge the judges to draw a line in the sand, you said to them. And, and just now you mentioned uh, poor Jamaicans who may face a similar situation. Could you say some more about what inspired you to make that argument? Well, there, in other jurisdictions like Barbados, the judiciary have decided that ultimately there comes a time when if our justice system can fully try you and convict you, it will be unjust to make you go back to trial. So in Barbados, in one case, said eight years was too long. And we are saying that for us in Jamaica, it is fair that all Jamaicans can come to an understanding that perhaps after eight years, after ten years, it's too long to subject Jamaican citizens to that kind of ordeal of another, another trial and another cause and another expense. Because what it would be, it would be an incentive for the system to know that in doing justice, we have to move with alacrity because persons are being affected by our decision and ultimately we do not want that to happen. And ultimately, for any well-meaning, well-thinking Jamaican, we would all want a situation in which the guilty are convicted and remain convicted and the innocent walk free. But if we have a system whereby it's taken so long, ultimately what we'll have is that scenarios may happen whereby the guilty are walking because our system realizes that we don't have to do nothing today. We don't have to collect a witness statement today, we can do it tomorrow. And eventually it takes too long for persons to become disinterested and we have a country which is ridden with pride. So is it fair to say the arguments you made today were not just centered around your immediate clients, but for future Jamaicans who may find themselves in a similar situation? It was centered around the ordeal that they suffer. But we are also recognizing that if the court say can happen to cartel, it can happen to other Jamaican citizens, including the poorest of us. So what it means is that if a Jamaican is in custody for 13 years and then he comes and says, my money is done, I have the next month to find an next lawyer and I'm worried that the system won't give me justice. It means that in such a scenario, he may very well, if a president is set one way or the other, may feel aggrieved. And we're asking the powerful court to examine our arguments and in light of all the facts of this case, do what they think is just. And that's what they'll ultimately do, even if we never ask them. Sir Clark, at the beginning of your visit, you know, you mentioned how the trial is granted, the defense will put forward it for the accused to be tried separately. Clarify what was meant, if that's exactly what you said. No, we're not saying that the accused will be tried separately. That's not, not what we're saying. What we're saying at its core is that we want the court to examine the special facts of this case, which the court knows, and then to, for each of the appellants, examine what are the factors against each to decide whether or not they're going to order the challenges. And so all we're asking the court to do is examine the facts of each appellant and come in to a decision as to what is just. And you noted that once that is done, we may find that the conclusion for each of them would be different. No, what we said at the beginning, and to be quite clear, is that we are of the view that the line in the stand is supposed to be the main point, being that for all other appellants, it is unjust in our view for a Jamaican citizen to be waiting in prison for more than 10 years to have the appellate process completed. We think that it's unjust. It shouldn't happen to cartel, it shouldn't happen to anybody. And we're saying that regardless of who these individual appellants are, it shouldn't happen to them, it shouldn't happen to your child, it shouldn't happen to your grandchild. And today, and for this matter, we're hoping that the court will say it can't happen.